The Tour de France is an annual multiple stage bicycle race primarily held in France with occasional passes through nearby countries. Held over three weeks spanning July, it's a grueling test of human endurance covering 3,470 kilometers, stretched over 21 stages over multiple stars of terrain. That's roughly the distance from London to Tel Aviv, New York to Las Vegas, Kathmandu to Shanghai, or Melbourne to Perth. The race's history dates back to 1903 when Gio Lefebvre, a 26-year-old cycling journalist for the daily sports newspaper Lotto, suggested the idea of a bicycle race to his editor Henri Desgranges in order to promote the newspaper. Henri liked the idea and the inaugural race was held over 19 days from July the 1st to the 19th. The race attracted 60 competitors who each shared in the prize money of 20,000 francs, 6,075 of which went to the inaugural tour winner Maurice Garin. Garin arrived in Paris nearly three hours ahead of runner-up Lucien Potier and almost 65 hours ahead of the 21st and last to finish competitor. With only 21 out of 60 riders finishing the inaugural race, the grueling nature of the tour was established early. In some ways, the race was more grueling than the modern-day version. Competitors pedaled the dirt roads of France through the day and night on fixed gear bikes, evading human blockades, route jamming cars and nails placed on the road by fans of other riders. The first tours were open to whoever wanted to compete. Most riders were in teams organized according to bicycle brand names who looked after them. The private entrants were called touristes routiers, tourists on the road, and were allowed to take part provided they make no demands to the organizers. Some of the tour's most colorful characters have been touristes routiers. There was no place for individuals in the post-1930s tours, and the original touristes routiers mostly disappeared, although some were absorbed into regional cycling teams created by Henri Desgranges. Night riding was also dropped after the second tour in 1904, when there had been persistent cheating when judges couldn't see riders. That reduced the daily and overall distance, but the emphasis remains on endurance. Desgrange said his ideal race would be so hard that only one rider would make it to Paris. The demanding nature of the race caught the public's imagination, and the race has been held annually since its first edition in 1903, except for when it was stopped for the two world wars. As the tour gained prominence and popularity, the race was lengthened and its reach began to extend around the globe as riders from all over the world began to participate in the race each year. Today the tour is a UCI World Tour event, which means that the teams that compete in the race are mostly UCI World teams, with the exception of the teams that the organizers invite. The modern editions of the Tour de France consist of 21 day long segments or stages held over a 23 day period. While the route of the modern Tour de France changes each year, the format of the race stays the same, with the eventual winner being the cyclist with the lowest cumulative time across three different types of stage categories. These include flat stages, usually high-speed sections across the French countryside, time trials where the cyclists compete individually and as a team against the clock using an aerodynamic bike and gear, and mountain stages, which mostly take place in the Pyrenees and the Alps, and make up the hardest part of the tour. All of the stages are timed to the finish, with the riders finishing times compounded with their previous stage times. The rider with the lowest aggregate time is the leader of the race and gets to wear the coveted yellow jersey. Although the holder of the yellow jersey can change throughout the race depending on who is leading at the end of each stage, the ultimate winner is the rider who is awarded the yellow jersey at the conclusion of the final stage of the race, which has ended every year since 1975 on the Champs-Élysées in Paris. Why a yellow jersey? First awarded in 1919, its distinctive color was inspired by the original Lotto newspaper, which was published on a yellow newsprint and so was a way to promote the paper in the early days of the race's history. But the yellow jersey, also known as Maillot Jaune, is not the only jersey in the race. Although it garners the most attention as it is awarded to the winner of the overall classification, there are other classifications or contests within the tour, most with their own distinctive jerseys. The green jersey, or Maillot Vert, represents the race's best sprinter. The polka dot jersey designates the race's finest climber. The white jersey designates the highest ranked rider in the overall competition, age 25 or younger. Aside from the jerseys, distinctive colored bibs are also awarded to certain riders during the competition. For example, the Dossard Rouge, the red bib, is awarded to the most aggressive rider of the stage and is worn by the rider on the following day of competition, while the Dossard Jaune, the yellow bib, is worn by the team leading the team classification. 
Aside from these distinctive prices, riders of each of the 22 new eight-man teams are required to wear the same color jersey. Each team's jersey features logos of sponsors who finance the teams that pay the riders' salaries. A few riders wear special jerseys. For instance, the reigning world champion wears a special rainbow jersey. National current road champions wear team jerseys featuring their country's colors. Together, all these riders with their different colored jerseys form a kaleidoscope of moving color on wheels called the peloton. And it is the image of the peloton moving through the picturesque French countryside and mountainous regions that make the Tour de France one of the most beautiful sporting show in the world. But the peloton isn't just there for good looks and serves a very important purpose of conserving a rider's energy. This is because the peloton reduces drag by shifting shape to exploit tailwinds, fight headwinds and cope with crosswinds, a strategy known as drafting. Riding in the middle or at the back of a well-developed peloton, a cyclist can save up to 40% in energy expenditure, whilst those exposed at the front, which requires the most effort and energy consumption, have little chance of winning the stage at the end. They do so for the sake of their team in order to set the pace of the peloton in accordance with what best suits their team's overall race strategy. But one cannot win the Tour de France or get to wear one of the coveted coloured jerseys by simply riding along in the peloton and being a passenger. At some point, riders must break away from the pack if they hope to improve their overall standings in the race. When a group breaks away, the drafting strategy changes resulting to different types of placed lines such as the double paced line, where the lead rider pulls over to the side away from the wind and the following rider takes a short relay facing the wind before subsequently pulling aside. This has the effect of creating a continuously rotating pace line. When the pace line encounters a crosswind, an echelon will usually form adjusting the double paced line at an angle so that the riders will naturally find cover. This is where team strategy can come into play. For example, if the breakaway consists of riders largely from the same team or riders who are no threat to each other in the classification, then they can work together effectively to distance themselves from the peloton and rival competitors. If, however, the breakaway consists of a rider from a rival team or a threat in the overall standings, then riders will offer no assistance and make him work hard to stay within the group, sacrificing a lot of his energy. In fact, whilst the Tour de France is an individual event in the sense that every man pushes his own pedals to get around the course, a rider's individual triumph, at least to some degree, is the result of selfless teammates. It's rare for a cyclist to win a stage without acknowledging teammates who've put him in the position to ride to a triumph. Team members who are not in the frame for major awards known as domestiques do the donkey work that enables their leader to thrive or sometimes simply to survive. This may mean fetching and carrying water and supplies from the team car or providing a small slipstream by spending a lot of time at the front of the peloton. Or it could even mean slowing right down to enable a colleague to catch up and pace him back into contention. A contender stripped of all his teammates in a breakaway or a mountain climb is very vulnerable and can result in what is known as cracking. Cracking or hitting the wall is what happens when a rider becomes completely exhausted and simply has no strength to carry on. When a rider cracks, they can dramatically fall away from the field, losing valuable time and in some cases drop completely out of the race altogether. Many Tour de France leaders have dramatically lost the Tour as a result of cracking mainly on the mountain stages. In fact, often the most exciting moments in the race is when two riders competing for the overall lead in the Tour will battle each other up the mountain stages, mentally and physically testing each other's resolve and trying to force the other to crack. If a rider does crack or retires from the race, for whatever reason, luckily for him, there is the broom wagon. The broom wagon is the name of the vehicle that follows at the tail of the race, picking up stragglers or sweeping them up who are unable to make it to the finish of the race within the time permitted. It goes without saying that you have to be a supreme athlete to overcome the physical and mental challenges of the race, but you also need to have a good team, a bit of luck and nerves of steel, as there are many hazards and obstacles that can play a significant part in determining the outcome of the race. For example, battling with the other 176 riders in the race can often result in massive pile-ups. There are many perilous descents, on mountain stages where riders can reach speeds well in excess of 100 kilometers an hour, 
where the slightest slip up or mistake can result in a dangerous fall. Then there's the weather. Rain, hail and even snow in the mountains can mean for a bad day resulting in falls or even catching a common cold which can kill your chances of finishing the race. While on the flats, blistering heat and sun can result in chronic dehydration and fatigue. But the riders do not battle the tour alone and there are just as many vehicles that form a long procession of team staff, race organizers and media all working hard to support the riders and bring the race and the beautiful pictures of the tour live to a global audience. Broadcast by 100 channels in 190 countries with approximately 6,300 broadcasting hours, not to mention the more than 5 million fans on social networks. Then of course there are the 10 million fans and spectators cheering the riders and made up of men and women and children who line the roads of the Tour de France for an average of just over 6 hours, all eager to see their heroes up close as one of the greatest sporting spectacles in the world passes them by. But before it does, they are entertained by the spectacle of the long publicity caravan that has become a big part of the Tour de France experience. Passing by one hour before the race, it includes approximately 160 vehicles, 600 people and distributes nearly 15 million items to fans. So you can see there's a lot to the Tour de France, but all of it makes for one of the most amazing and memorable sporting events and spectacles on the face of the planet.